Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here. Hope you're having a fantastic day today. I'm going to do another full length painting video here for you on my most recent painting. This is titled Dawn. I had a number of requests to do this full length video and I'm excited to bring you this audio commentary as well as the full length version of this painting. So I hope that you enjoy. I'm going to start out here with some water, just getting the canvas a little bit wet. I don't want it to be soaking. Just a little bit of water on there to help the paint, the first initial layer to flow a little bit better. Um, today I'm going to be using a number of brushes, and I have them here in front of me so I can tell you what they were. I'm just using a 1 inch chip brush. I have a 1 inch flat head. I have a 2 inch flat head. And I have a number 8 filbert brush. I'm going to start out with some Mars Black using that uh, two inch flat head brush and um, just using it to kind of cover in and lay in some of the sky a real really dark background and then I'll, of course I'm going to come back in with some titanium white and lighten that up that Mars black there I'm just trying to get some good coverage here something that I can go back in and mix up and play with as I work on getting a sort of a grayscale tone to this painting I had a couple of ideas for what I was going to do in this particular piece and my initial idea was to do a cityscape, have a gray scale background, like I, like I said, and then have some um, breaking of dawn, maybe some bolder oranges or red, something like that, and then have the dark silhouettes of the actual city protruding into the sky. And I thought that would be very dynamic and interesting, and maybe have some lights within the cities dancing across um, a lake or some water in the front. As you know, I love painting water and painting reflections, so I wanted to, you know, kind of get my my favorite things in there if I could. So I was thinking I was going to do that. Well, like most things happen, as I started painting, I realized that, you know what, I, you know, cityscape may not be the right direction for this piece, and it ended up just being a landscape, a uh, very simple, elegant little piece, and I'm I'm so happy with how it turned out. For those of you who don't know, I record the actual painting process um, in, in full in one big take. And then I will go back in and add in this audio commentary that you're listening to right now after that fact. I think it's a good time to take a moment here and tell you what my color palette is for this piece. I've already mentioned one of the colors, actually two of them, and that is Mars Black, Titanium White. I'm going to come in a little bit later with some Alizarin Crimson, some yellow, uh, cadmium yellow medium as well as some cobalt blue just on some of the trees that I put in a little bit later and you'll get to see that. I'm a visual artist and I love painting and uh, just everything about this process of creativity and creating something new. The possibility of a blank canvas to me is the, probably the most exciting thing in the world. Um, that, or maybe playing music, I'm also a pianist and I, I really enjoy doing that as well and actually even composing new music that's also an exciting idea of having a blank page and filling it with notes it's kind of a similar feeling it's sort of the the unknown aspect of that so uh, that i really enjoy you never know quite know what how a piece is going to turn out when you're composing it you never know quite how a painting will turn out until you put the final strokes and i always kind of have a loose idea for my paintings but i don't try to block um everything out or to have it too many pre-sketches. I like to kind of explore and create and react in real time. Too much studying or too much thinking for me just kind of takes some of the pleasure out of it. I've done more realistic looking paintings and I, I've taken some time to study correctly how to do art and taking classes in college and so forth. So I, I know how the process uh, of what some artists you know, enjoy and tend to want to do to get a fantastic painting, and I respect that. If that works for you and you want to really plan everything out, do lots of pre-studies and sketches, go for it. I'm so happy that that works for you. For me, I'm a creative person. I have a very free personality. I want to throw paint on the canvas and see what happens. That's just what works for me. And if it doesn't work for you, that's okay. That We're all just trying to be creative and to make something new, and however you get there, it's, it's enjoy the ride, that's what I always say. I've added in some titanium white, of course, while I've been talking here, and have mixed it using still that same 
I believe it's a two inch, um, I'll actually switch here to a one inch flat head brush. I like using these flat head, flat head brushes, excuse me, for mixing because they just work very well at grabbing a lot of paint and just getting it going. I've put in the horizon line there. I may shift that a little bit lower. Uh, I may not, I'm not sure yet. But mostly just trying to block in some color in some areas here with that black and some titanium white. This is a fairly simple piece for me. Not a lot is going on color-wise. Um, mostly just trying to create some atmosphere and some tension with the, the darks and the lights. And um, trying to get it to a nice, you know, mid-tone gray, but with some movement and some mist. So there are several artists that I enjoy watching here on YouTube, and also I get to see their work on places like Google+, and some of the communities that are there of artists who like to share their work and um, there's been a several uh, artists that I watch and enjoy looking at their art who have been doing these sort of misty grayscale paintings lately and I thought hey I want to do one like that and be a very neat and fun experience to try and see what I could come up with so here I am painting away and working on this grayscale like I said painting of course as I go along I bring in a lot more color of the lizard and crimson it's a nice cool red and I enjoy Loves working with that color. So cool. It's a nice, nice color. Okay, I've decided to kill a lot of that black with the white, kind of get it again to a, gr a nice light gray. Bringing in some of that color, like I mentioned, I was going to. This is a mixture of alizarin crimson and cadmium yellow medium, excuse me. And uh, yeah, just bringing that in with my little, looks like my chip brush there. A chip brush, if you don't know, it's just a, a cheap little brush. You can get them for like a dollar, a dollar or two. They're throwaway brushes. You just buy one, use it for one or two paintings, and then you throw it away. It's often used in like crafting and, and painting, like tool, tool painting or tool painting. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Um, when you're just painting like ornaments and things like that. I like using them because they're just, they, the bristles break and they bend and they have uh, interesting sort of patterns and it's, less controlled and they're they're cheap and they're easy to use um, you can just buy a bunch and throw them away and you don't have to feel bad about it I've more recently invested in some nicer acrylic brushes for acrylic painting and I may eventually stop using these chip brushes at all together but I have a small supply here so I figure hey why not use it while I have it right save some money don't buy more brushes it's right now if I have these little chip brushes that I bought for miniature painting I said I'll just use these as well. Bringing in some more titanium white, gonna lighten that whole area up a little bit more, and using some just left to right horizontal strokes here. I want movement. I'm not trying to make it too too precise with any of my movements. It should be very free and relaxed, almost like you're doing an abstract painting, because this is kind of what it is. It's kind of abstracted what I'm doing here. Okay, back to some of that black. I want to darken up that upper sky, make it a little bit darker. Have some clouds kind of coming in a little ominously. And because I just decided that the right hand side, where it's lightest right now, is going to be where the sunrise is going to break. I decided to then darken up the opposite corners to create some depth and some dynamic tension between the dark and the light. Ooh, here it comes. They live in crimson. That first layer of orange was just to kind of have an orangey gray hue cast behind the lizard crimson. So I purposely put some orange on there and then evened it out with the gray. And then now I'm going to come back in more seriously with the beautiful uh, lizard tones. Here are these little clouds just bursting with color as the sun rises and this is an abstracted landscape so I'm not trying to be terribly realistic with what I am painting here as far as the colors yes I've seen that color in just a few sunsets before and even some sunrises but I know that it may not 
be that pure but I don't care because I'm just creating something that I feel is artistic and interesting and I'm not going for realism that's not my objective I'd rather do an abstracted artistic interpretation of a morning sunrise that's very striking and visually dynamic and interesting than to do a photographic type painting for a number of reasons those who like to do photographic paintings, I have nothing but the utmost respect for them. They are very talented. I know just how difficult it is to get a painting to read like a photograph. And if you if you are one of those painters who who can do that, bravo, hats off to you. That is fantastic. I for one, I don't know if I have the patience to sit there and just little stroke here and little stroke there. I've talked to other artists before, and they've told me that. They'll take three to five days or weeks to do a painting, and wow, that's amazing. That that's dedication to your craft and to your art, and that that's an, that's incredible and that's wonderful that you can you can sit there and do that. I am much more like a dog seeing a squirrel. Squirrel, squirrel. I am so ex off to the next thing, distracted very easily, um, and so. Uh, to sit and to do a painting, the same painting for so many days, I think I would just be get into what I like to call analysis paralysis, and what um, and actually that term is taken from board gaming. I don't know if you, any of you like to play board games or enjoy doing that, but whenever someone is taking a very long turn, um, you see that sometimes in poker um, tournaments, you'll see them uh, sit there for five or six minutes thinking about their next play. Yeah, it, analysis paralysis, overthinking it, that, that, that for me is not a good thing. So doing one hour spontaneous paintings like this are much more my speed rather than trying to do hyper-realistic week-long marathons on a single painting. But that's just me. Like I said, if you're someone who can do that, hats off to you. Bravo. Bringing in some more Mars Black here. and using that side-to-side -side motion. I'm just sort of leaving little gaps in the between the individual strokes. I want it to be kind of feathery and fanned out, not too, too even. Okay, bringing in the gray a little bit more. I'm gonna go back over with some more black before the end, but again, I wanna smooth out some of those far, their edges and make it a little bit more subtle. At this point, I'm still thinking buildings. I haven't quite decided to switch over to just doing a landscape, but when I get to adding in the trees, that's where I decide, yes, I'm gonna just leave these trees as they are and not add in the buildings after that. Okay, a little bit more of the darker gray. Still using that two inch flat brush. A little bit more of a cloud reflection there. Okay, grabbing my number eight filbert brush here. I'm going to start making my short horizontal strokes, and that's a mixture of a touch of cobalt blue, a little bit of some of the Mars black, and a good helping of the white to kind of make it darker gray cast to it. So a touch of the blue, not very much. I'm using a very light touch as I'm painting these trees back here. And you can see that I'm doing lots of different brush strokes. Some of them are left to right. A few of them are sort of with a twisting motion of the brush. And I'm going to make sure that as I go along, I have the darker portions of the trees more to the left-hand side. And then as I get closer to the sunrise, I'm going to make sure that the trees themselves get a little bit lighter. I'm also being careful to leave little bits of the sky showing through. As you can see here, I'm darkening certain areas of the tree line, but I'm not covering up all of the gray that I created. I'm making sure to leave little portions here and there as I go along. I've noticed that as things get closer to the light source, they're going to get lighter. So here I'm using the very last bits of my brush to bring in some more of the trees right next to the sunrise but as they get further away to your left they're going to get a bit darker a 
Oh, I love the way the filbert brush reacts. It's such a great little brush. It's so great for trees because it has that rounded edge and it, it, they just look so beautiful. And it, it's nice to just put a bunch of little strokes and a few minutes later you have some trees. It's that, that simple. Bringing in some reflections here. I'm going to kind of create a grayish cast underneath this tree line and I'm going to define a little bit a little bit more the edge of the water and where that's falling. It's a little unclear on the left hand side so this white will help to delineate that that point where the the bank actually begins and anywhere that it's too light I'm going to go back in and, and fix it. starting to work. The light is coming out from the red on the right hand side, kind of shifting into that milky white, oop, bump the camera, and then becoming darker to the left. Just adding in a few watermarks here, using some brisk left to right strokes. Have some motion in the water. Adding a few of the reflections of these larger trees here with my filbert brush. Taking the larger brush, I'm going to add in a little bit of the lighter gray, a bit more of the black, and back to the lighter gray. I want the reflections to not be a solid band, so I'm breaking it up a little bit, trying to match more or less what's above, not perfectly, but close. This painting is not terribly difficult to do, and I think that Considering the, the scope of the composition, um, anyone could really get a handle on this. This mixture I'm bringing in here is titanium white, cadmium yellow medium, and some of the lizard crimson. And then I'm going to come right back with some more of the crimson and sort of blend them together so that I have some highlights and some darker shadows here with that interplay of the bright spots of the sun dancing across that water with that orange and then the darker, deeper um, reflection of the lizard and crimson, that cooler, will work as my shadow. This was a fun little piece to paint, and I just had a lot of fun with it. Again, it's a fairly simple little piece. Just taking my chip brush and adding a few more of the, the orangey, creamy color of the highlights. And um, yeah, I think it turned out pretty well. I, I could probably put in a few spires in the background and make it a little bit more sci-fi-y, or I could make it, you know, like a more modern cityscape but it was just so pretty and so simple and delicate. And uh, as it was, I thought it was, it was nice, and so I didn't want to lose that simplicity and that beauty by adding in these large buildings. So um, after giving it some thought, I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to enjoy it as it is. And that's what I did. Leave it as it is. Don't overwork it. I don't want to ever be pecking at it. If I am confident and sure, then I'll make the brush strokes and I'll do it. But if I'm sitting there for 20 minutes, just kind of going over the same spot here and there, that's not what I want to be doing. And I think that that's where you're getting off track. So when you're just puttering around and not really sure where you're going, um, then you've got to rethink that and that's not going to work. So at least for me, it doesn't. I got to take off my clip at the top there and paint underneath it with some of that darker gray. So that's what I did and then I'm going to add some black to the side of the canvas. I like to paint my edges black a lot of the times and for this painting particularly it really works because there's so much dark Mars black underneath as a sort of a base color for the painting. So I think the Mars black on the side gives it a nice elegance to it and that way it can be hung either framed or even unframed and it'll look great. Okay, last 
last few touches here a few little changes to the sky just starting to smooth things out a little bit and I think I'm gonna go back in and add in maybe a few clouds Now, I want to point something out here. I just took a dry brush. I was trying to smooth things out, and you notice there's some lighter white that is appearing. And I didn't want that. I didn't like that. So what I'm going to do in a minute is to take some of the darker gray and add in a darker cloud right, right there. And it's going to really balance the left-hand side with the right-hand side, and then reflect it, of course, in the water below. It took me first kind of messing up to then go back in and realize, okay, I need to fix this. This is not lo looking right. It's not working. So first I try fixing it with the Elizabeth and Crimson. Didn't work as well as I was hoping. So I decided, okay, I'm going to darken it up a little bit. Still not quite working yet, so I'm going to keep playing with it. That's what I get for, for picking at it a little bit. I should have left it alone, and I didn't, and so then I had to go back and Make some changes. Okay, here's that gray I was talking about. Ultimately, the gray, I think, was exactly what that section needed. So I'm glad that that happened. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but my cat is trying to get into the room that I'm recording, and he's meowing at me. I'm not sure why he does that, or why he wants in here. We never let him in this room. But there he is trying to meow at my door. Anyways, go away, Oliver. <laughs> Silly cat. Okay, a little bit more of the cloudy gray to add some, some darker clouds here. And I think that's about it. That should do it. A few last touches and we are done. Thank you so much for watching this painting video. I hope that you enjoyed it. You can buy my art at my Etsy shop, Impulsive Artistry. Just look for me on Etsy. There's the link right there. I'll put a link in the description below. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, my blog, and on Google+. So check those out. And as always, thank you for watching and have a fantastic day.